Hi, I am Dr. Sakir Mansoor and this is my channel Learning Anatomy and uh, today's topic is uh, clavicle anatomy. Yes, it is also known as the color bone and it lies horizontally. It's the only long bone that lies uh, horizontally in the body and, uh, and now the detail clavicle is derived from a Latin word means a small key, right? So it, I told you, also known as the color bone, long bone and it acts as a strut connects upper limb to the trunk very important it connects upper limb to the trunk it serves as a movable crane like strut i told you already rigid support strut is a rigid support from which the scapula and free limb are suspended keeping them away from the trunk so that the limb has maximum freedom of motion the strut is movable and allows the scapula to move on the thoracic wall as the scapular thoracic joint increasing the range of motion of the limb. Uh, so as I uh, told you and discussed with you that the scapular thoracic joint is a physiological joint. This was uh, mentioned in detail in my video on the shoulder joint. This, uh, this is a joint uh, that um, allows the uh, scapula and the muscles to connect with the trunk and the, make possible the movements of the elevation, depression, and the protraction, retraction of the scapula. Forms one of the bony boundaries of the cervical axillary canal. Passageway between the neck and arm, affording protection to the neurovascular bundle supplying the upper limb. So the anatomy, you know, in detail, bony landmarks, it has a cylindrical shaft. This is the shaft. You follow the red laser. This is the cylindrical shaft. It has two ends. This is the lateral end, also known as the acromial end. And this is the medial and the sternal end, right? This is the anterior surface and part, and this is the posterior view. Another features, uh, it is divided into shaft. The shaft is divided into medial two-thirds. This is the medial two-thirds, right? And the lateral one-third. This is the lateral one-third, right? This is a sinuously curved, forming a letter S, capital S. And uh, this is the medial two third, which is, um, uh, you know, uh, which is the uh, convex forwards, and the lateral one third is the concave uh, in front, right? Concave interior. These convexes increase the resilience of the clavicle. So uh, this is a right clavicle. Here you could see this is a right clavicle, a chromial end of the clavicle. Right? This is a chromial end. This is a chromion of the scapula. They form a joint, a chromioclavicular joint. And this is the sternal end of the clavicle. Right? This is the shaft of the clavicle. The sternal end forms joint with the sternum of the uh, sternum, uh, manubrium sternum, sternoclavicular joint. This is the inferior surface of the right clavicle. Inferior surface, chromial end. You could see chromial end with articular facets. These are the Articular facet, you could see, right? And this you could see on posterior aspect, there is the conoid tubercle, right? And inferiorly, right, this near the chromial uh, end is the this trapezoid line. Very important, these tubercle. I will uh, tell you what is attached to these tubercles, right? So in the middle part, one third, middle one third, inferior surface is attached, is present the uh, subclavian groove, subclavian groove, right? Obviously, subclavius muscle is attached. So then, uh, impression for costoclavicular ligament. Here you could see near the sternal end is the impression for costoclavicular ligament. Here it is. So this is the sternal end. Here it has a articular facets for the sternoclavicular joint. So this is the right clavicle superior surface right so what is present it is as you could see a chromial end right this is the sternal end and this forms a chromial end forms a chromioclavicular end and the sternal end forms a sterno the uh, clav sternoclavicular joint sternoclavicular joint and uh, this is the shaft of the clavicle right so these this is the features and then about the nutrient foramen this is a laterally directed nutrient foramen lateral to the subclavian groove, right? This is a subclavian groove inferiorly, and it lies lateral to that somewhere here. It is directed laterally as well. 
so its nutrient artery is a branch of the suprascapular artery now the attachments very important so this right clavicle from above you could see first of all uh, on the anterior border is attached the deltoid right and on the posterior border is a trapezius attachment here you could see and uh, pectoralis major on the anterior surface whole of the anterior surface right this you could see obviously this is the two third of the clavicle and sternocleidomastoid on the i mean medial half of the rough superior surface sternocleidomastoid attachment so this is from below the right clavicle attachment right you could see this let me know enlarge this for more clarity you could see first of all i will discuss the lateral end here you could see this is for the cricoclavicular ligament here you could see this was the conoid tubercle and the conoid ligament attached there this is a trapezoid ligament and the trapezoid um, line is there its attachment this is the deltoid i told you already that is anterior border attachment of the deltoid and the subclavian groove provides attachment to the subclavius muscle and this is a pectoralis major muscle attached to the anterior surface right this is the anterior surface and this is a pectoralis major and this is the costoclavicular ligament near the you know sternal end and this is the sternohyoid muscle right so these were the attachments from below and you could see in detail this costoclavicular ligament parts this is the conoid ligament this is the trapezoid ligament and this is the coracoid process of the scapula here from this coracoid process this part it is going to the trapezoid line and this part is the trapezoid ligament of the coracoclavicular ligament part and from this root of the you know coracoid process goes this to the conoid tubercle this is the conoid ligament so these two separate ligaments trapezoid and the conoid part form the together the cricoclavicular ligament so the capsular attachments right of the sternoclavicular and the acromioclavicular joints at the lateral end the joint capsule of the acromioclavicular joint is attached to the margin of the articular surface of the acromioclavicular joint at the medial end fibrous capsule of the sternoclavicular joint is attached all around so let's see how the side determination is done about the clavicle right you could see this is his right clavicle superior surface right clavicle inferior surface right let's uh, discuss some points medial end is bigger and quadrilateral you could see this is a medial end and this is quadrilateral obviously this quadrilateral would be having the four surfaces right and the medial end would be having two borders and uh, this is uh, you could see lateral end of course this is flat I told you already this lateral end is flat medial end is quadrilateral and shaft this shaft here shaft is sinuously curved in a way that its medial two third is convex forwards you could see medial two third this medial two third is convex forwards this is the convexity you see the laser and lateral one third is convex forward and this is concave forwards this right so this is the anterior aspect you could see the lateral one is the you see concave forwards the inferior surface has a groove in its middle and this is i told you already and this is a subclavian groove in the middle of third there's some specific points about clavicle some call it the um, specific clavicle peculiarities so let's see what are they only long bone lying horizontally being subcutaneous throughout first bone to begin ossification and is only long bone that ossifies by intramembranous method and only long bone that has two primary centers of ossification no medullary cavity is present it consists of spongy or trabecular bone with a shell of compact bone so the transmission of shock this was um, um, mentioned um, as a function of clavicle 
will talk this is but first is a, a mainly though i told you that she acts as a strut strut and it suspends um, a pulley from the trunk and transmission of shock very important clavicle transmit shock produced by the trauma from a pulley to the axial skeleton via the cracko clavicular ligament as the remainder of the pulley is passively suspended from the clavicle by the same ligament the cracko clavicular ligament this transmission of shock is usually sustained by falling on to the outstretched hand from the upper limb to the trunk and thus is one of the most commonly fractured bones right this fracture is because the cracko clavicular ligament is so strong that it does not break and the other the clavicle gets fractured right and this fracture of the clavicle and the other clavicles that we will uh, discuss um, in uh, some other video of mine with you the video about the clinical the, the fractures of the clavicle so thank you very much to listening to my um, uh, lecture and uh, stay tuned and please subscribe to my channel and uh, subscribe and uh, to you know share thank you very much bye